If you've ever owned a cat, or met a cat, or even observed a cat, you know that herding them is out of the question. Fortunately for us, project teams are not cats. Even the most well-herded teams can run off in different directions if left unattended. Project integration management is the process by which project managers keep their cats in a basket. In this lesson, we'll define project integration and look at what it entails. We will also meet up with a couple of the critical herding tools, the project charter and the project management plan. Projects have a life cycle, which includes starting the project, organizing and conducting the work, monitoring the work, and ending the project. As project managers, we try to plan projects in as much detail as possible. Details like activities and milestones, assign resources, due dates, and costs all appear in the 10 PMI Knowledge Area Subplans. The main objective of project integration management is to consider all the subplans and then manage the entire project holistically. This integration gives the PM the ability to make critical decisions about where to allocate resources, how to juggle competing demands, and to ensure that the processes are customized to meet the goals and objectives of the project. The fact that the many facets of a project are integrated helps a project manager quickly see the impact of a change in one area on the ability of the team to make project goals in another area. The project charter is the first significant document produced for a project. The charter defines the working relationship between the performing organization, the project team, and the requesting organization, the internal or external client. The entity responsible for creating the charter is the requesting organization, represented by the sponsor. The project charter formally recognizes the project manager and gives them authorization to use organizational resources for work on the project. Additionally, the project charter provides a high-level view of the scope and schedule, along with milestones and deliverables, costs and resources. It identifies essential stakeholders, defines how the project will be approved, and provides an exit plan should the project be cancelled. Lastly and importantly, the project charter includes agreed-upon success criteria so that the project manager and the sponsor can have the same expectations for project success. But what do you do if your organization doesn't have a formal charter development process? For example, in my former company, the need to undertake a project went from the president to my boss to me. It was still necessary to capture the same information that would be in a charter. But we chose to formalize the request through an email. With this more informal process, we tried to ensure that expectations were validated, attempting to reduce the risk of project failure. When the project charter is approved, the project manager begins developing the project management plan. The processes a project manager uses to integrate all of the facets of the project are encapsulated in that plan. The PMP becomes the primary tool for project integration management. So how can we herd teams better than cats? We recognize the power of project integration management identified by PMI as the domain of the project manager. From this perspective, we can see the project big picture, keep focused on goals and objectives, and harness all the resources available to lead the team to a successful outcome.
Continue listening to future Harrisburg University videos to learn more about the project management plan and how it impacts you as a project manager. Check out all of our professional education offerings at professionaled.harrisburgu.edu.